having pledged about $62 billion in dozens of energy and infrastructure projects, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is one of the largest commercial initiatives in South Asia. The corridor stretches along the length of Pakistan and the combined value of all the projects equals to all the foreign direct investment in the country since 1970. The mega project also marks as China's biggest overseas investment, yet a plan of this magnitude is not without its geo-economic challenges. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Short for the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, the CPEC has two arms that consist of a network of roads, bridges, pipelines and railways that will run from China's westernmost city of Kashgar to each of Pakistan's major cities before connecting to the deep water ports at Gwadar and Karachi by the Arabian Sea. From end to end, the mega project stretches about 2700 kilometers. The scale of the initiative also demonstrates the extent of the Pakistani-Chinese relationship. The two countries refer to one another as Iron Brothers, a phrase that dates back to the Cold War when they teamed up against India. Of course, the relationship between Islamabad and Beijing has seen its share of frictions, yet overall the two are indispensable allies for each other. and the. CPEC, which was signed in April 2015, serves as a complement to that relationship. Besides politics, the CPEC is ultimately an economic undertaking that serves multiple goals. For Beijing, the initiative seeks to open a new trading route to the Indian Ocean, allowing the Chinese to bypass the maritime choke points in the contentious South China Sea. The growing commercial activity in Pakistan would also allow China to develop its remote western cities. Meanwhile, for Islamabad, the CPEC provides much-needed foreign investment and all the economic opportunities and perks that come with it. The initiative will also help to stimulate economic growth in Pakistan and improve the living conditions in its underdeveloped western regions. For instance, the energy projects of the initiative, which account for at least $30 billion of the total investment sum, would address Pakistan's annual electricity shortage of 7,000 megawatts. It is estimated that if Islamabad could overcome its electricity shortage, economic growth could climb by an additional 3%. Thus far, all the energy projects together would add at least 10,000 megawatts to Pakistan's electricity grid, with another 17,000 megawatts being considered for future projects given that Pakistani energy needs grow by 10% each year. In addition, the numerous pipelines that run across Pakistan would connect the Middle East, Central Asia and South Asia with each other, thereby providing a platform for Pakistan to emerge as a regional energy hub. Another component of the economic corridor is the development of Qadar by the mouth of the Arabian Sea. A new airport, motorway and railway is being constructed near the city. More importantly, the deep sea port in Gwadar is being redesigned to accommodate large freighters. To put the expansion into perspective, the harbor's current capacity stands at 1 million tons of cargo, but it will expand to 400 million tons of cargo per year, making Gwadar one of the most sophisticated ports between the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. Altogether, it's not surprising that the corridor is portrayed as a remedy for Pakistan's future, one that will stimulate the economy, reform the energy sector and create employment simultaneously. On the surface, the concept of the CPEC offers mutually beneficial payoffs within the framework of the Belt and Road Initiative, which we covered in a separate report. However, in practice, the payoffs will not be evenly distributed across the country, which has upset some more than others. Perhaps the biggest complication standing in the way of the CPEC mega project is Pakistan's domestic landscape, where the province of Punjab, Sindh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan compete with one another for political power. In particular, Officials from Balochistan accuse their countrymen from Punjab from marginalizing their people. In the CPEC project, this rivalry has taken a political dimension. 
In 2015, the Punjabi elite in Islamabad cut the Baluchi locals out of the equation in the operation of Quadar port. This delegation of power is understandable. Pakistan's political and economic heartland, as well as its human capital, is concentrated along the Indus River, which runs through the country's eastern half. Moreover, Punjab is the wealthiest and most populous province of Pakistan, and for the political leadership, it's also the most important electoral province. Thus, marginalizing Baluchistan is not a conspiracy, but the result of the social-political environment of Pakistan. Regardless, some Baluchis do not welcome the CPEC project. Just recently, on August 11, a suicide attack by Baluchi separatists targeted a bus carrying Chinese engineers to a CPEC project site. The assault injured six people, including three Chinese nationals. Similar attacks have occurred in the past. In fact, from 2014 to 2016, Baluchi militants killed 44 CPEC Pakistani workers. What's different now is that the Baluchi separatists have started to target Chinese engineers. An estimated 40,000 to 70,000 Chinese nationals work in Pakistan's toughest areas, such as Kashmir, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and Baluchistan. Up until now, Islamabad having provided about 15,000 soldiers and paramilitary forces to protect CPEC workers, has largely kept the situation in check. However, as the local militants in Pakistan start to target Chinese engineers, the security risks are likely to worsen, which will upset Beijing. Already, the Chinese leadership has hinted that it's ready to take a more direct role in security like in Africa, where Chinese troops are deployed to protect Chinese workers. Thus far, Pakistan remains responsible for the security in its own territory, but as militants increase their attacks on Chinese nationals, calls for Chinese deployment in Pakistan will increase in Beijing. This will strain the political process underneath the surface. Another pitfall of the initiative is finances. Previously, in 2013, the CPEC was valued at $46 billion. Today, that amount has surged to $62 billion. Furthermore, since the beginning of 2018, the Pakistani rupee has lost about 20% of its value against the dollar, which has made the dollar-denominated debt repayments more expensive. In the meantime, the country's foreign exchange reserves have dropped to below $10 billion, while its external debt has grown to 30% of the GDP. It's unknown how much of Beijing's funding is in aid or in loans. That information is kept deliberately obscure. However, the present economic crisis in Pakistan is leaving the government with no choice but to dig deeper into its wallet. And now, the Pakistani government is seeking to acquire a 9 to $14 billion bailout from the IMF. Having said that, policymakers in Washington oppose using IMF funds to repay Chinese loans, unless Pakistan opens the books on the CPEC project. For Beijing, that would be a geopolitical disaster, because it would expose the Chinese checkbook diplomacy and undermine its megaprojects elsewhere. Instead, to contain the Pakistani economic crisis, Beijing is likely to provide additional loans to Islamabad so it can pay off its original loans. What exactly China's endgame is remains ambiguous. It is assumed that Beijing wants to gain more commercial leverage on Islamabad so the Chinese will gain permission to construct a new naval and air base in the port city of Jivani by the Iranian border. Such a military base would grant China significant leverage on India. Whether this is true or not remains guesswork at this point. And although the completion of the CPEC project will stimulate economic growth in Pakistan, the government in Islamabad must make sure they don't become too indebted to Beijing. Beyond this, if Pakistan is truly to reap the benefits of the mega project, the state must crack down on corruption, strengthen civilian institutions, and maintain political stability. At the same time, the Pakistanis will need to address the growing security needs that revolve around the economic corridor. 
One way to deal with the Baluchi grievances is by including them in the decision-making process. Still, even with these geo-economic pitfalls, for the Iron Brothers, the scale of the China-Pakistan economic corridor is too big to fail. Thus, for Beijing and Islamabad, the benefits of the economic venture outweigh the risks. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Credit goes to our community on Patreon for giving us the means to produce content like this. Now, if you want to gain access to some perks or if you want to support our channel in general, visit patreon.com slash Caspian Report. All the funds will help to keep Caspian Report independent and free of sponsors. In any case, thank you for your time and Sarol.